Mm -hmm. okay. Good morning, everybody. What a treat. What a treat. I have a lot of treats. I'm very fortunate uh, and this morning, especially someone who's a real, true rock star. Um, when I was younger, I loved Metallica. Now I like Pamela Mertz. Um, not enter Sandman, but enter the, the rock star of, uh, of everything that has to do with um, having, a, having a personal experience, going through life experiences, and then um, taking some difficult and challenging experiences and turning them into something that propel you further, propel you higher, and then paying it forward. I can't think of a more active and influential person than Pamela Mertz in that regard. Um, so my name is Uri Schneider from Schneider Speech, and, and here we are having this conversation. And uh, as I've said before, these I shouldn't be here. I have no business being here, but somehow, some way, these conversations all happen behind the scenes. So I figured, hey, everybody feels so isolated. Why don't we just invite more connectivity and more connections and share our networks? So Pamela's network and our network and Rich's network in Australia and this one and that one, we can, we can share stories. And through sharing stories, different people will resonate with different things and different people will feel there's some more hope, there's some more possibility, there's some more wisdom, there's some more resources. It's a world where we all are a little bit in our own little cave uh, in one way or another, and all the more so now. And so these connections and opening up doors and creating connections is what this is all about. And so I'm really grateful that, that Pamela uh, agreed to come on. And I think she also shares a unique voice um, of a woman who stutters. And uh, she's been a great advocate in that regard for the entire community of people who stutter. Um, she's a board member of the National Stuttering Association. She has her own blog for a long time. She's got a podcast with how many, uh, how many uh, episodes are we up to? I, I, I just actually interviewed a woman last, last night and she will be at uh, ep episode 221. <laughs> 121. Now I can tell you, I'm, I love this and it takes me very little energy. I get more out of it than I put into it, but it's effort. <laughs> but I'm like at like, I don't know, 20 or so, 200 plus, I can't even imagine. Um, so the links to Pamela's uh, podcast and blog are all in the description. Um, it's a great treat and I'll let Pamela just introduce herself. What do you, what do you want to share? What do you think people should know? What are you most proud of? And then we can jump into where you've been, how you got to where you are, and what are some things you're working on for the future? Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for that, and thank you for have 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 ha having me today. Um, this is this is fun, and I always like to have con con conversations about my personal experience. Um, so, and and uh, first. Firstly, you can feel free to call me Pam. I, I like Pamela in my in my uh, professional role, but I, I answer to Pam, so that's good. Um, as you said, I'm on the board of directors of the National Stutter, Stutter, Stuttering Asso Association. This is my fourth year in uh, with that. Um, I was a past board member of the International Stutter Stuttering Association. I am currently right now um, very actively involved behind the scenes of putting together the annual um, uh, three week online conference for International Stuttering Aware, Aware, Awareness Day. I've become the webmaster for that and putting together um, all the contributions that we have. Um, the conference begins on October 1st and we're, we've got about 50 contributions from people who stutter, pe people who care about pe people who stutter, professionals in the field. Um, we have um, a couple of pieces from parents, so I always get excited, excited, excited about this con conference every year because it's a good way for um, people who don't don't stutter to interact with the authors of the pieces and um, and do that. Um, um, I'll I, put the link. I'll put the link in the in the description if it's not already there or in the comments if anyone's listening and could put it in there. Drop your likes, drop your comments, your questions. We'll see if we can get to some. 
share this to add, you know, more listeners so Pamela's voice and stories can reach more people. ISAD is an incredible global experience um, from the beginning of October until October 22nd, which is the crescendo. It's the International Stuttering Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. It is a product of many people's decades of efforts to bring the world together uh, as a community of people who stutter um, for self-advocacy, for more understanding, for professionals, and just bringing people together around the world around this too misunderstood topic and creating connections and understanding and conversations and strength and courage, great things emerge. And, and so it's always been ahead of its time. Um, I, I shout out to Mike Sugarman and mm -hmm. Judith Custer. I, I'm less familiar with some of the international pillars of it, but I know that they, they deserve a big shout out and others do as well. Forgive me and Pamela will fill in uh, perhaps, but for those I missed, please don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. We're joined by Dr. Phil jumping in. Oh, hey. very nice. <laughs> How are you? We're here with Pamela Mertz from the National Stuttering Association. Oh my gosh. I love recyclable <laughs> Zoom links. This is amazing. Abba, would you like to share anything? Uh, we were just talking about International Stuttering Awareness Day. Or would you like, maybe you were popping in on a personal level and you want to pop off, that's okay too. <laughs> yeah, I gotta keep moving. In any case, uh, <laughs> carry I just on. Want to you, keep you on for one second to just tell you sure. one thing we shared a few minutes ago. John Clausing was saying something as follows. He said, one thing that stands out in spending time with you was your habit of always saying good morning to everyone you cross in the street. And so <laughs> popping in here unexpected is so on point. Just <laughs> say hi. So thanks for popping. Hi. In. Good morning, Pamela. Where are you? Hi. I. I'm. I'm in. I'm in upstate New New York. I've heard of it. Albany. <laughs> heard of that also. Good to meet. Yes. Uh, yes. We we have met once or twice pers personally at con 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 conferences, but um. Uh, you've met thousands of people, so <laughs> it's okay that you may not remember meeting me. <laughs> well, that's why I'm getting a chance to re reinvigorate the memory right now. So yeah. thanks for what you do. The, uh, I appreciate everybody's efforts to make these things so powerful and such a wonderful healing force in the world. So thank you. Thanks, Abba. All right, I'm going to pop away. <laughs> go, go to it. Take care, Pamela. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Always live. Oh. You gotta love it. One live. Yeah. Anyway, so I said I'll finish with that. October twenty second is the crescendo. It's an International Stuttering Awareness Day, and the website will have you know all these wonderful submissions, and it's really a, a global conversation, as Pamela said, and Pamela's behind it all as the webmaster. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a it's a it's a plethora really really of um, experiences. We have um, papers submitted. Um, by and about people who stutter and their and their and their personal experiences, we have um, papers and submissions um, on research therapy and support, and then we also have um, creative expressions, which is actually my favorite 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 part of the of the con con conference. Um, we have people that have submitted video of of of, of their of, of their experience. We have a couple of people, um, most notably a 10 year old boy who stutter, stutters has submitted, has submitted a poem. So it's really a unique place to, to hear from all these different voice, voices um, that don't ordinarily get a chance to amp, amp, amplify and, 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 and be on, on like a public um, and obviously international stage. So really looking forward to getting that to getting that that started um you mentioned at the beginning and i would just like to um um add to that um i've been blog blogging about my own personal exper experiences with uh stuttering uh since february of 2009 um that one, blog of, the first, one of the first bloggers 
I, I, it might possibly be. Um, it's uh, called Make Room for the Stuttering. And that title is signif signif significant because um, when I was first coming out about stut stuttering, I'd been covert for a number of years. Um, I, met, I, 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 I met with a very wise counselor slash ther ther therapist, and we were talking about stuttering. And he made the com comment to, to me, um, I don't hear your stut your stut your stuttering. I hear all the words around it, and you make room for it in mm -hmm. such a way, um, you know that 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 the words sandwiched around 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 your stuttering are um, so much more important than the actual stuttering mo moments. So that stuck with me, the making room for, for the stuttering. And that's how my, that's how my blog title um, was born. And I always felt um, prior, prior to the pivot mom mom moment that I had that tipped me over from, from covert to overt, um, uh, was, was when I began to finally rec reconcile, um, that I can be a per, a per, a person who stutters and an effective communicator and all these other things in my life, stu stutter, stuttering certainly did not have to define or limit or limit me. Um, and then the podcast came a year later in 2010. Um, so I've been um, amplifying the voices of women, women who, stut who stutter, um, and, and as you know, we're, in, we're the minority within the minority. Um, women, women who stutter, I like, to, I like to say we're unicorns. Uh, I like to say you're the vocal minority. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the podcast start, started because I had found my voice. And I wanted to give a place for other 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 women to to find and express their voice. And you know what's funny is that I did not think it would last. I did mm -hmm. not think that women wanted to um, share 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 their stories and make it pub public on the internet. So I was thinking, oh, this is going to be like a you know, a short, a short, short, short term thing, five or six episodes. And, you know, at this point, I've interviewed 220 pe people, not only from the United States, but from all over the world. Um, and that's really special because um, it just shows the universality of the, the stuttering experience particularly from women. Wow. So what would be um, something that stands out either, I'm sure out of 220 conversations of that sort <laughs> and life experiences around the world and many years of experience from the podcasting or this specific angle, and then we can come back to your story, which I, I, would, I know a lot of people would love to hear. Um, what would you say is something unique to the experience of women who stutter, something that stands out that that isn't captured necessarily enough that you feel deserves some extra understanding and attention? Well, <clears throat> just the fact that, um, that women have stor stories um, <clears throat> that need to be told. And one of the things that I've learned um, uh, is, is simply asking somebody to tell their story is enough because we don't often get asked to 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 share our story so i i think in in the 10 years of doing this i've only had one person decline but for mm -hmm. the most part everybody has jumped and 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 wanted to share that story many women have told 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 me that up until hearing a podcast episode by two people, two women, women who stutter, that they thought they were the only ones. And 
you know, and I've even heard from men who stutter that have told 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 me they didn't know women stutter, stuttered too because yeah. of that because of that you know we're only you know one out of five people you know four or five people that stutter are men and and only one 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 of five is um a woman but i got a little off track there what i you know mm -hmm. your your question was you know what has been you know an important insight with the with the with the pod podcast um, which, by the way, I believe I'm the only person in the world hosting a podcast exclusively for 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 women. Um, you really, really uh, penetrated that space quite nicely. There is, there's not a lot of competition, so you're dominating in that space. But that's where leaders go. Leaders don't follow; they lead before others go there. And so, 100, percent you know, finding mm. finding the stories that need to be amplified. And I'm thinking of Barry Yeoman, who hopefully we're going to mm. have. And to have a conversation you know he's someone who, who who tells stories and writes stories so beautifully but what you're doing is you know this is what we all need to do is listen to the stories of people outside of our immediate space and 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 if we can what pamela's done is create a platform for that so women around the world who stutter this is this is a unique platform so after 220 conversations what's what's like a common thread that's unique to insight to understanding and giving more voice and, and uh, acknowledgement to the voices of women who stutter what would be a well what i found um all all almost across the board is that women are eager and want to talk about the experiences of stuttering women want to to actually talk about the the feel the feelings and the emotion and the emotions uh, yeah. behind behind stuttering whereas in my experience men seem to be a little more fo focused on the fix you know like you know they're not really interested in talking about how it feels or the isolation or you know uh the 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 shame perhaps and the lengths that women i have found that women tend to be more covert 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 than 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 men but you know women are women are emotive and 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 want to want to share those emotions and i in my experience um being in the stuttering commu commun community for for a while now i find men more interested in you know help me to be fluent you know and women tend to not want to go there of course some do but they don't want to go there so quickly because all of the feelings and 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 the emotion that just comes from being a woman uh period you know the socialization that we've had um the often <clears throat> um societal uh, opinions of women of women being you know the person that's in the background the nurturer the caregiver giver um you know uh it and that you know like calling a spade a spade women have traditionally been conditioned to be the um uh inferior gen gen gender so to to have women talk about what that is like along with stut stut stuttering just really has been i think very empower empowering um for women who are sharing sharing their stories and i have found that to be uni universal whether it's a woman in um you know uh west africa whether it's a woman in Slovenia, whether it's a woman in Peru, um, not talking or about Mania doesn't stutter, right? When you said Slovenia, it just made me think. No, Mania. I, I, I was yes, I'm, I'm talking about um, a woman. Uh, her first name is Beat is Beata. Um, so mostly everyone on the pod 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 podcast stutters. I have had a couple of women who do not stutter um, on the podcast, um, and they are women who get 
the stuttering experience. So I've had Vivian Sis Sis Siskin as a guest. I've had um, Jill Douglas as 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 a guest. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and and names of um, women who who understand very often the lengths that um, us wim us wim us women who stutter um, oft, oft, often take to normalize stuttering. Would it be fair to say, it sounds like what you're saying, uh, and I know Stephen, our good friend Stephen, uh, just is watching this. So if anyone wants to drop a comment, a like, a share, those things are very helpful. We'll try to incorporate that into our conversation, but it also helps share Pamela's story and help get this conversation out there, and especially today is an opportunity to really shed some more light and understanding on the experiences of women who stutter, something that Pamela is very <coughs> passionate about. It's interesting what you said about, you know, adding the layers of, let's say, gender um, roles and things like that. You know, so it sounds like for a person who stutters, there's the identity of being a person who stutters. And then depending on any number of attributes, you might be a person who stutters who's also an African-American. You know, that conversation with Call of Coffee. You might mm -hmm. be a person who stutters who has Down syndrome. You might be a person who stutters who has Asperger's. You might be a person who stutters who's a woman. You might be a person who stutters who's uh, transgender. Uh, and so you may have many, and I'm not, don't mean to exclude others, but we all wear right. many hats and have many identities. So I think what you're saying is sometimes they, they bleed into each other, right? So like mm -hmm. the experience of being a woman, some of the gender experiences of being a woman can influence and color the experience of being a person who stutters and that needs to be taken into consideration. Is that fair? It is, it is. And um, in the early, early, early days of pod, pod, podcasting, um, I was talking to, to women, women who freely mentioned that, you know, um, things like hormones, things like pregnancy, you know, affect the, the spectrum of stu stuttering that we may have um, <clears throat> monthly, weekly, daily. And, and, and to be honest, <clears throat> I had never considered that, you know, but then as I began to think, think, think about that, well, oh my goodness, yes, that's absolutely true. You know, um, there are physical exper experiences that women have that men don't. Um, and just to talk I, about- I didn't know about that till now, I had you know, preparing for this, I spoke to my wife and she told me, in fact, that's true. There are different mm -hmm. experiences that are deeper than identity or social constructs. There are also physiological, biochemical differences. It's news to me, but it's something yeah. we need to listen up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, women, women, women have shared, shared, shared with me that, you know, there's certain times of the month where their stut stuttering is, is, it is more, is, is more pronounced. Um, Can I jump in for one second? Yeah. I am so, this is, I'm so glad you brought that up because there's no way I could bring that up, but I just want to let you know, and anyone that's listening, this is so true. Mm -hmm. And it's not news to me or to my father. It's a very delicate conversation to have with it, any, it is. especially if you're not a woman. Um, <laughs> but if you're dealing with something that has a, a tendency or a potentially uh, correlation with changes in hormone levels and biochemical, you know, balances of different chemicals and hormones in the brain, which there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just something to, to be aware of and mindful of. When you realize that, oh, that elevation of stuttering that I'm experiencing that's creating great anxiety and panic, oh, it's not a linear kind of like escalation. It's actually correlated with my cycle. And likely as I go through my cycle, I will come through it just as I do with other changes of swelling or other emotional experiences that shift through that time it can be very liberating. And I think, I, I don't know, and I'm putting it out there, please, I know there are some of my good friends that can comment here, and I'll definitely bring this up with Jerry Maguire next week and Kristen Camella next week, both of whom have contributions on this topic. 
Uh, I don't know if there's any studies on this, but I have seen it time and time again as a very liberating, very important note. So for clinicians, for parents of young women, and frankly, for boys going through puberty as well, uh, mm -hmm. changes in hormones. So women experience it on a monthly cycle, some more regular, some less. Uh, pregnancy, um, uh, birth control meds, anything that's messing with hormones should right. be considered. And for boys, uh, they don't have the same cycles, but around the time of puberty, they certainly go through a massive upheaval. And uh, it's not uncommon, and people sometimes associate it with the stress of entering high school or this right. or that. Sometimes it's more biologically shifting. And I know there are people listening that think all kinds of things about the basis of stuttering and what it's about. I'm not entering that, that argument. What I do want to emphasize is there are definitely things that exacerbate the stuttering experience. And when you have no idea what's going on and you feel out of control and totally clueless, you mm -hmm. make up stories. And often those stories lead to worry, horror, fear, and right. behavioral shifts and patterns of things you're ready to do, not ready to do, and all kinds of guardedness. So I just want to amplify what Pamela is saying, which she kind of saying one of the things that stands out is this undiscussed, underappreciated impact of hormonal changes impacting stuttering is something that clinically my father and I see all the time. And in the most delicate of ways, um, it's gotta be done in a respectful, appropriate and delicate way, but helping a woman or a young woman understand this can be extremely helpful. Indeed, indeed. And, and, and that, that seemed to be you know, um, a universal theme when I when I when I've talked to women, women, um, you know, particularly young, younger, younger women, um, you know, that that is definitely some some something uh, to be exper experienced. Um, I've also seen it um, uh, for probably about six years at the National Stuttering Association annual con con conferences. Um, I, I led and then recruited a couple other women who stutter. I led um, women only workshops at the con, con conferences and quickly found out that that was a really important space for women. And yeah. we'd often have um, 60, 75 people um, to come into those workshops. And we would divide into small groups to give people oppor oppor opportunities to, you know, um, share 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 their stories. Um, and very often we saw tears, you know, because women of different ages are share are share are sharing their stories of dating and marriage and preg preg pregnancy and, you know. Um, um, will I ever find a life part, a part, a part, a partner um, that is going to value and cher cher cherish me beyond the stuttering? Um, and 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 just to see, not even here, but just to see the power power of you know giving women physical space together to talk about 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 those 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 things um, was really important uh, uh, to to provide that physical space so I'm kind of in that position where I'm helping to provide a vert a virtual space as well as at the conferences um, a physical a physical space um, and also during this unprecedented time that we're that 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 we're currently find finding ourselves in i've also i've also hosted a number of women only zoom zoom meetings um which again it's really important to just have that space because when it's only women women can let their guard down they can ask questions that they may not feel comfortable comfortable asking um, when men when men are around and can feel freer to be emotional and let and 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 let some of those emotions out so it's um it's definitely it's definitely important work for people uh to explore the, just the issues of identity and being a woman who who stutters 
And I think so I couldn't agree more. And mm -hmm. I think the work that you're doing in the National Stuttering Association to really continue to be leaders in you know being there, building community, making sure people don't feel alone wherever they are. On the one hand, these are extraordinarily challenging times for all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even more important to find your community, to find support, to find those rooms where you can find your your people. People get it. So you don't feel alone. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, it's incredibly challenging. So I think your podcast, again, ahead of its time, amazing because it transcends physical boundaries and physical space. The blog, similarly. Uh, how are you in the NSA and what are you doing these days kind of continuing to do the, the vital work that you do in a world that deals with geographic boundaries and, and boundaries of being together when it might not be safe to be together in ways that traditionally we would, what, what, what are some of the opportunities and ways that things are happening at the NSA? That you're mm -hmm. Well, you may know um, that the NSA launched a, in a, in a in innovative pro pro program um, <clears throat> now, we launched it in January of 2019 so we're approaching two, two, two years now with this. We um, have a program called We Stutter at Work. And that initiative um, base, base, basically sprung from the idea and, and my long, long held beliefs that the NSA could do more for just people who stutter I think it's important to do some advocacy and outreach to the other 99% um, that are in that are in 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 our worlds um, and help help um, um, other people better understand stuttering. And in the we stutter at work um, uh, realm, what I really wanted to do, um, I was one of the leaders and the drivers behind this. What I really 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 wanted wanted to do. Um, is to create opportunities for employers to better understand stutter. I really wanted to do. Um, I was one of the leaders and the drivers behind. Okay, that was kind of weird. <laughs> Basically, I was uh, I was putting the We Stutter at Work website link, and as I did that, the Facebook Live started talking to you, so you were hearing yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so 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 we stutter at work focuses on providing education and awareness and information to employers and not just people who stutter. Um, I just found that we could have we could have gone to the next level of providing resources for <coughs> pardon me um, people that are not just people who stutter. So we've developed a bunch of resources um, for people who stutter, um, namely mock interviews. Uh, we offer- in touch with Kunal this week <coughs> out of New York and obviously George Dakia. These are people yes. that in the New York financial district are doing incredible work, uh, creating mock interview opportunities at places like Goldman Sachs and Mitsui <coughs> Corporation. Little known fact, I was a Mitsui scholar. I was at Queens College and they had a $10,000 scholarship for uh, business students and I had a minor in business. And uh, Barbara, someone from Queens College can remind me, I'm blanking out on her last name. She was so kind and caring. I only remember her first name. Anyway, <laughs> she said, Uri, you gotta apply. I said, I don't know, I don't wanna write. She's like, it's a scholarship and there's so few applicants, just write the thing. And I remember sitting down at the Mitsui Corporation and having my little kosher meal and unpacking it. And I was like, wow, this is special. These are great people. So the Mitsui Corporation where, where Kunal works uh, has hosted such a, a mock mm -hmm. interview as well as George Dakia at Goldman Sachs. And, and this is just two examples of, of things born out of, right? Born out of this initiative that you're talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. and, work. <clears throat> and uh interestingly, I I helped George with the ones at with the ones that not well, surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not surprising. Yep. So I went down. Uh, I, I'm in upstate New York. So a trip to New York City is only two and a half hours. That's right. I just want to emphasize people that don't know New York generally think, oh, New York, New York City. New York City, right. <laughs> right. Area. 
Pamela lives in Albany. Albany is not a suburb of New York City. It's the capital. It's the capital <laughs> district. It's actually the capital of New York State. And New York right. City is this little city on the bottom. Yeah, so I wouldn't goes, say I wouldn't say it's little, but <laughs> well, everybody now wants to live upstate. That's that's what's happening. Is people want right. to buy uh, homes up there because some people don't want to stay in the city. But I I appreciate those who are hanging in there, and, and we will come back just as we did before. But uh, so I'm just emphasizing Pamela's dedication is not just virtual. She goes the distance. Yeah, so I've gone down to Goldman Sachs um, for their first two uh, mock interview events and helped George uh, behind the scenes, helping people register, helping advertise it and promote it. But importantly, I was um, part of the uh, presenting an overview of stuttering to the Goldman Sachs employees that were volunteering to be um, interviewers for people coming in. So it was nice to be able to be part of that stuttering 101 um, uh, for employees that were giving up half of their day to vol vol volunteer to be interviewers. Um, and I remember very distinctly asking people, why are you here? You know, why aren't you doing some other volunteer activity like some of the other some of your other colleagues are like, you know, volunteering to uh, help for um, build um, uh, 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 habitat houses or, you know, volunteering painting, uh, you, you know, um, um, a shelter or something like that. And many people had said because they didn't understand stutter stuttering and they thought that uh, becoming better attuned to stuttering might really help people who stutter really get a job. Um, so it was much more tan 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 tangible uh, for those folks. So I found it really interesting to be in that position to uh, to be providing the in 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 information. Um, and, and helping people better understand it. And another fun fact, um, um, at the end of the day at the Goldman Sachs uh, um, mock interview day, um, the first year, I, a after the networking and the lunch and stuff, or not lunch, the networking at the end of the day, and uh, we provided some food and people were just, you know, talking and whatnot. And I and, and I and and I was kind of like cornered by this one person that wanted to talk about. My God, you are such an incredible speak speaker. And how do you do it? What's your trick? Like, what's your you know what's 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 your message? And this person is fluent and was talking to me about how ter ter terrifying it, it 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 was for him. So we were chatting for about a half an hour. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw somebody else patiently wait, wait, waiting to get my atten attention. Um, so we finally finished up with this, this one guy who I'm still in touch with because um, I had helped him consider getting involved with Toast, Toast, Toastmasters and, um, and the like. But this, so the second person came, came up to me and he was from the New York City Mayor's office of, of and, and he was representing their um, employment opportunities for disabled New Yorkers. And he, he asked me, would I be willing to come and speak to his, his staff at the mayor, mayor, Mayor's office about um, stuttering and differences and because they have helped people who stutter get 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 jobs. So you know, I wasn't really sure. Like I said, you know, I don't live down here in New York City. There's lots of other people like George, or you know, <clears throat> at the time we had Haya Goldstein with us. She had also helped with the you know the stuttering 101. Another and, and, rock star woman who stutters, who's also an exceptional speech language pathologist and podcaster with StutterTalk.com. Yeah. Yep. She is. So, so I, I, I said, why don't you ask one of these folks that are already down here? And he said, no, 
we, I want you because you like commanded the room. You, you, you show, you show, you show people how effective a communi communicator um, um, can be even with stuttering. And so to make the longer story short, I did wind up going down to New York City um, four or five months later and met with the, um, with the mayor's staff and, and gave them a stuttering one, one, 101 uh, session. And it was just kind of neat because it just kind of shows like when you do amplify stutter, stutter, stuttering and talk about it often, you never know who's listening and you never know the Im, 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 impact of um, you, me, just, being courageous enough to get up there and 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 communicate and not have stuttering limit or define you, but as my blog says, make room for it and still be able to talk about whatever it, whatever the topic is at hand. Wow, I just want to, if I may, can I share a few uh, just things you sparked in my mind? Mm -hmm. First of all, there's a thing I tell people often. Not as much with stuttering earlier on in the journey, um, because I think it's it's too much of a cliche and it's it's not appropriate at the wrong time. But let's say with ADD, for example, which is something unlike borderline ADD, borderline dyslexic. Um, sometimes your kryptonite can be your superpower. Mm -hmm. it's, it's two sides of the coin. And so here you are, and, and we're going to get to it. That it, what hasn't always been this way. But, no, it uh, hasn't. Hey, yeah, <laughs> born out of much experience of of challenge and grit um, and things that we wouldn't necessarily wish upon anyone else, but things you've lived through, here you are today, and the very thing that some might say is a demerit or a kryptonite weak spot in your communication has ultimately led you to leverage and to highlight uh, the things that make you the great communicator you are today. Because for someone who's fluent, the words are a penny a minute. Um, <laughs> someone who stutters, you grow up learning that words are precious. Mm -hmm. And you choose your words. And you speak with courage. And you speak with strength. And um, I think of it as like word economy. You know, for me, words are cheap. And for someone who stutters, sometimes it's not that way. And so when you do ultimately have the courage or do your thing and just say what you have to say, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't do it callously we do it sometimes with more deliberate intentionality and i think that's what makes some people who stutter such incredible communicators so i think for anyone listening if that resonates the idea that your kryptonite can become a superpower and continue to be a kryptonite it can be two things at once that's one thought the other thought um that struck me was i love what you do and that you know as a person who's been across a journey and kind of got to a certain barrier boundary river and somehow got across the river there's a beautiful story i think i've told before here that uh there's a story told the guy gets to the river and he's kind of like mulling over what's he going to do he's going to turn around he's trying to gonna like go around it ultimately he builds some hodgepodge bridge and he gets across the river and people watching him are like hey, good for you go on with your journey and he turns around and he starts to reinforce the bridge he built that helped him cross the river and people say what are you doing why are you going that backwards they're not going backwards. There are going to be other people that are going to come to that riverbank mm. and they're going to need to cross the river. And if I can reinforce that for them, they'll be able to cross with a little bit more ease, a little bit more support than I did. And that's what I think of you and what you're doing. And so I just have the utmost respect. And the third thing that I would say, and then transition into your story, the third thing, <coughs> one second, processing. I think I lost it. I'll give you one moment. Um, second. If it's worthwhile, it'll come back to me. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, so tell us, I, I know a little bit, but um, can you share with us some of those challenges that you endured that have kind of shaped who you are today and what makes you do what you do with such passion and devotion? Um, I think it's important to highlight 
that you know some of the people I'm speaking to are further along in the journey. And some people listening might be parents or speech therapists or young people or young adults who are in a very raw, challenging, dark, heavy place. And uh, one shouldn't think that it's peaches and cream or that there's some kind of a panacea over here, but rather it's through these stories of openness and honesty that we can shed some light that what can be dark can become light and what can be heavy can become lighter. Um, and, and through different stories, women's stories, men's stories, and people who are black people's stories, and mm -hmm. all kinds of stories. The more stories we share, we can borrow and steal a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of light, and create connections and create opportunities. So you're really passionate about this employment project, and I know that that's not just by accident. So can you share with us what are the experiences you lived and you know are the experiences of other people who stutter with regards to employment and discrimination and so on? And some of the lessons learned uh, that you can pass on. Mm -hmm. So, 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 yeah, I've had, I've had some of those dark place, place, places that 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 you that you referred to um, for a very long time, too long of a time. I was very covert, um, and and um, you know, for those of you that maybe are not aware of what covert is, I was one of those that used every trick that 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 i could to to pass as fluent um and for a long time i was very very, very success successful at at that um but as i got older i began to see that the the tricks and the crutches and essentially the avoid avoidance that i used just weren't working as well as they had previously. Um, so I had been in a long time job. Um, it, I've been, I'd been in this job for about 20 years. And for the most part, my stud, stud, stuttering was um, controlled. Uh, I, I was quiet. I was shy. I let people believe, believe that I was happy be, being, being that person. But in no way, shape, or form was that me. Um, I was fine. I was desperately trying to find a way out of this fake persona sona that I had create, create, create it for myself. And, you know, for another time, uh, I can talk about the clear demarcation line I had between fake Pam and real Pam. But at that job, <clears throat> um, I, I, I was fired after 21 years. Um, and the reason uh, was, was for my communication was, 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 was poor and that I was not a good role, role model for the youth that I worked, worked, worked with because my stuttering was starting to come, come out. Um, and I had a uh, director above, above, above me that um, didn't like me anyway, which is fine. I mean, that's going to happen. Um, but we, but, but he, he was, we were like um, uh, oil and water. We, it, it just, it, it just did not work. So one day I was called into the center director's office. This uh, manager was there. The HR person, person was there and you know, I saw, I saw the handwriting on the wall and, 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 and I, I, I was dismissed and I was escorted down to my office feeling like a criminal, um, had to pack up all, all, all my things. It was a, it was a horribly traumatic event. Um, and staff and students, this was the middle of the day, staff and students saw what was hap happening and I remember a, co a colleague coming up to me and whis whis whispering to me, "It's not about your stuttering, right? It, it, it was it, it, that's not why you were let 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 go, right?" And that kind of like struck me for a minute, like, "Wait, somebody knew? Somebody knows at work that I that I that I stutter because I had thought I had." covered it up well or you know I thought I had your covered cover, it better. Your cover was blown. Your cover My was cover blown. was blown. 
Right, right. And and so when I mentioned, um, you know, I was searching for a way out, well, the way found me, um, you know, and getting 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 fired was like that, that pivot mo moment um, that led me to do a Google search on stuttering for the first time ever in 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 my life. Um, and I set out on this uh, advent adventure to finally figure out a way to come to terms 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 with this. Um, for listeners, um, I did file a complaint of discrimination with the EEOC. Um, I retained an attorney an attorney um, because I felt like I'd been fired for um and an ada protected discrimin discri discrimination um it was a very long pro process uh two and a half years um ultimately wow. uh, yeah and 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 that two and a half years um made it very difficult for me to recover and move 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 on with with my life um but for the longest time i felt guilty I felt it was my fault for ha ha having having been 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 fired because I was consumed with if I had only been open about 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 stut stuttering, you know, it wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been fired. And that was one of the layers mm -hmm. in my onion that needed to be peeled. But um, with the lawsuit mm -hmm. and whatnot, I got I, I, I was awarded a settlement and that I was happy with that because that essentially proved my point. They wouldn't have, you know, they wouldn't have agreed to a settlement had they not believed that there was some wrong, wrong doing. Um, so I was happy with that. It was like a vict, a vict, a uh, victory. But I had to relearn how to live my life and shed not, that. Not undercover not undercover it's exactly. the real the real the real version of uh, the authentic pamela mertz right right um and that and that and that and that was a tough road um you know so uh suddenly getting up the next day with no job um you know i had i had i, I had i had to figure out you know what 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 was i gonna do because i was ready to be authentic and and come 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 clean with myself and to to the world um but i, I didn't know how to do that so when i googled stutter, stuttering um i found that there was a local chapter of the national stuttering association in my backyard like 15 minutes away and had i known known that again it, it knows, found you it found they, you all, all the all the seeds were planted Mm -hmm. And when you weren't ready to take the step, and of course, this is only in hindsight, you know, your employer kind of pushed you to the edge, pushed you to your rock bottom to force you into a very unpleasant, but very pivotal experience. My father, that's what I was going to say. My father popped on a little earlier by mm -hmm. accident, which was such a treat and so characteristic of him. Um, the, 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 the film the documentary film Transcending Stuttering, the inside story for anyone that wants to understand more, freely available on our website, schneiderspeech.com slash movies. The themes in the film are not contrived. They're literally born out of the stories of people who stutter. And my father filmed authentically as people went through processes. He had a video camera before that was a thing and videoed everything and then put it together into a 20 something minute film. The reason I mention it is that it's uncanny and it's powerful and it's it's practically insightful for individuals for families and for therapists to tune into some of the common themes and so in a, two previous conversations like this tam uh richard stevens said the exact same thing he was living a, a half a smaller a different a disconnected version of himself mm -hmm. and um and a, a situation of somewhat of an embarrassing situation led him to step out of the room go for a drive and say that's it i can't go on like this mm -hmm. and sometimes people get there on their own 
sometimes young people get there and have a pivotal decision. I think Michael Levin in the film says, I raised my, I didn't raise my hand and I knew I was the only one that had the answer, but I didn't raise my hand because I was scared to stutter, but I felt frustrated with myself. Mm. And what you're saying is a, the initial feeling of like, I should have raised my hand. And then the, I should have, should have raised my hand, you know, the should have, could have. Uh, my line for that, which I don't say everywhere, is you got to stop shooting on yourself. You can't mm -hmm. should, should, should all the time. But uh, what a universal message. And so for you, as jaunting, as jarring, as challenging, as exhausting as whatever that experience was, today you look at it and you say, well, I didn't make the step. The step came to me. And mm -hmm. then you just do a Google search and you find out that the support that maybe could be so transformative wasn't miles away. It wasn't the mayor's office downstate. <laughs> it was in your backyard. And that's just a plug for the NSA, what they've done with with chapters spanning the entire, you know, 50 states, I think. I don't mm -hmm. know, but right, really creating satellites, uh, a network of these support groups. And there's so many other great organizations, but the NSA is definitely the leader in this space of support groups around the country, currently transitioned onto Zoom. Mm -hmm. So that wherever you are, you can be connected. Um, and there are others that are online. I think you were a host, a hostess of uh, Stuttering Stutter Social. Mm -hmm. Stutter Social, Stutter Social, which was built on the platform Google Hangout, uh, which was mm -hmm. an international and continues to be an international regular schedule of support meetings run by people who stutter on different time zones so that people around right. the world can a convenient one and log in. Uh, brilliant, brilliant platform. Daniel Rossi, who was one of the people that was in a conversation early on, was one of the founders. Um, David Resnick, who was beatboxing, I love, another, and uh, many others involved. And, and Pamela was one of the hosts for many, many years. So fascinating, right? And so, like all these opportunities that exist, sometimes you find it, sometimes it finds you. Any any parting wisdom, just to round out this first conversation? Uh, parting wisdom, hopes, dreams. Well, oh, are, are we still there? I think I lost. I, I think, okay, you're back. You were frozen for a minute. <laughs> that is uh, stuttering Zoom. Zoom yeah. is stuttering, so you just hang in. Yeah, so I guess the, ahead, final, the, fi the, final, the final words um, um, uh, in regards to that experience was that I had promised myself, I made a pact with myself that somehow, someday, I would use that experience to help other, other, other people in their careers. Um, you know, I would share that experience and help people, people realize that, yeah, discrimination exists. Yeah, it can be tough in the work, in the work, in the workplace, but there are people, there are resources that can, can, can help you have um, successful career out, out, outcomes. And um, I was able to do that. I was able to, to, you know, uh, put that, put that, put wow. that experience in place and help and help and help create and, and deliver We Stutter at Work. Um, so it was a promise that I made to myself uh, 12 years ago that uh, four, you know, four years ago, that was the platform that I ran on to be, to get on the board of direct, direct, direct directors. Um, and it's worked and I'm, and I'm, and I'm really happy that I've kind of like come full circle um, from where I was to who, who I am today. I, I would just say with the greatest admiration and appreciation, you've made good on that promise and then some. Mm -hmm. And um, you should be blessed with a lot of health and strength to continue for many, many years to come to continue. You have so much to offer. You've already done uh, so much. And to just continue to build on that and you know, build more bridges for others in their private life and others who, who want to be as innovative and active as you are. I know Mark Winsky gave you a shout out here in the comments. Mm -hmm. You know, he's rocking it on TikTok. I don't think you could do that the way he does. <laughs> Everybody's got their own contribution. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't checked out Mark Winsky on TikTok, you're missing out on some, some humor, some great entertainment, some great insight, some great advocacy. Um, mm -hmm. And he's using that platform in a way that's absolutely brilliant and, and in a way that only he could do it as he does. So everybody's got their thing. But Pamela, I'm so grateful 
I want to thank you. And I hope we'll have more conversations like this. There's more you have to share and there's more people want to hear. So if you like this, give it a like, share it, comment. Uh, Pamela will definitely follow that and get back to it. If there's anything you're interested in in the WeWork uh, project at the NSA, I put the link in the comments. You can also contact the NSA through the website, westutter.org. Mm -hmm. You can check out Pamela's podcast, Pamela's blog. All of those are linked and uh, in the description and also in the comments. And if there's anything you're interested in seeing what we're doing, schneiderspeech.com on the homepage, I would direct you to the blog page, it has all the previous conversations end up over there. You can also go, there are four buttons there for different options, whether it's looking for private therapy, the online course for people who stutter for teens and adults, or the group therapy for teens and adults, as well as free events. So you can click on any of those four options, whatever you're looking for, or if we can help you or connect you in any way. The NSA is, is, is an address that everyone needs to know about. If you're a person who stutters, take advantage. There's tons of material and resources and, and also, you know, support groups and information of how to connect to community. Community is so important always and even mm -hmm. more today. So mm -hmm. I'm grateful for Pamela taking the time and for all you do. Yeah, and just one, and just one yeah. last thought. Final word from Pam. She's going to have the final, final word to take us home. Yeah. So you can find my blog and podcast at stutterrockstar.com. And that's also my Twitter handle, at stutterrockstar. Um, so, so you can find me in a lot of places and I, and, and I, I would be happy if you did. <laughs> and I want to apologize. I didn't give proper credit when I called you the rock star. That's totally <laughs> where it came from, but I didn't give credit. So the handle stutter rock star, mm -hmm. um, is the way to go. And so Pamela, again, it, where can people reach you just to kind of hit that one more time? Yep. Um, at stutter rock star on Twitter and www.stutterrockstar.com uh, for my blog and the pod pod podcast. There are certain people uh, who are truly pivotal in a community and in a, a movement. And Pamela is one of those people. And the material on the blogs and the podcast is something that stands the test of time. It's relevant as much today as it was when she recorded the first and second recordings. That's what's great about evergreen content. And uh, thank you, Pamela, for everything you do. And I hope everyone takes advantage of everything you put out there and the whole community. Thanks a lot. Thank Wishing everybody awesome, awesome day. And again, thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, our honor.